We're now joined by Amit Singh of Google to talk all things augmented reality. Today, announcing AR Core. This is to help developers build more AR products. What are you hoping for? So, very excited, Carolyn. Thanks for having me here, first of all. Um, AR Core is a developer platform for augmented reality on top of Android. What we are excited about is now 100 million phones have AR Core in them. We've certified those phones to, to build high performance AR experience for developers. So phones like Samsung's phones like S8, S9, S7, uh, LG phones, Xiaomi phones. We're actually also building, bringing AR Core to China. And so we'll have this global footprint for developers to build really delightful experiences. Entertainment experiences where you can have a stormtrooper standing next to you from Star Wars or go shopping where you can you know, get a couch right for your living room and make sure it fits. Or actually education where you could have kids you know, walk around the solar system using just the phone that they have. So very, very excited that it's open for developers and they can build for it now. Um, where, therefore, are you likely to see hits? Are you hoping for the next Pokemon Go? Are you hoping for money to be made off of what are these, some of these games? You know, I think right now it's all about you know, enabling developers to make AR experiences. Some of them will be games, the next Pokemon Go. Some of it will be utility experiences, shopping. Um, some will be educational experiences or just personal expression, right? You know, hanging out with, with the stormtroopers or whatever. Um, we see that this being a very broad platform that people will build many experiences towards. And over time, you know, money will come when there is usage, there's attention, and actually it's adding value to, to you as a consumer. And when it's across the Android platform, how are we going to see this regionally broken down? Is this something, of course, that needs especially powerful phones, but is it something that can be targeted to the emerging markets as well? Absolutely. Um, AR Core currently works on high-end phones because it needs certain performance, right? It needs a certain powerful chip, a certain type of camera, uh, but we are over time going to build that not just to high, for high-end phones, but also to medium range and low-end phones. You can expect over the next couple of years, billions of phones will have AR capability built into them. And how, therefore, you oversee VR as well, of course. When is that going to become more of a reality? When does it lower its price point? When can we buy the hardware that will make it much more user-friendly? So VR, you know, that's where the team started in virtual reality and has now you know, added augmented reality as part of its uh, remit. Virtual reality, uh, the, the difference is it takes you somewhere. Augmented reality brings digital objects into your physical world. Virtual reality uh, and virtual reality capturing of the real world is where we, we are leaning in. So imagine being able to come to Mobile World Congress simply by putting on a headset. Now wouldn't that be a lot, yeah. more <laughs> a lot more convenient and easier. So we're seeing that as a use case. Um, we've seen that in education. We have this product called Expeditions. We've rolled it out to students in the UK and the US. And there, instead of going on a physical field trip, you can actually put on a very simple cardboard headset and go on a virtual field trip. We have 500 curated field trips and more coming. And so the idea of going places is what really is resonating in VR. And we are building capture systems, cameras. We are building headsets with like cardboard on the low end and Daydream, which is a high performance product for mobile phones. We can simply slip the phone into a beautiful, comfortable cloth based viewer, which is lightweight, and then go somewhere, whether that's a YouTube VR video or take an expedition with your kid. This obviously works within your ecosystem. You're talking about a YouTube video. How important is this to Google as a whole? You know, overall, AR and VR are um, platforms for immersive computing. Computing that works more like we do as humans, where instead of looking at a small rectangle glass in 2D, you're actually interacting with computing in 3D. So Google Lens, for example, is one of those technologies where the phone recognizes what it sees. What plant is that? What, what a cute pair of shoes, where can I get them? The idea of recognition and then enhancing that or augmenting that in the real world is a fundamental you know, new immersive platform. VR is on one end where you can just don a set of goggles and go somewhere. 
AR is on the other, other side where through a phone, you can bring our, you know, objects in your physical world as if they were off that world. So immersive computing is the way I would describe both VR, AR, and Lens. And the idea is we are investing in all three of them to bring them at scale to consumers. And are you behind the curve? Having seen AR kit come out that much faster, is this something you're in a race to keep up with? Or do you think you've always been able to be there for developers? Honestly, we've been investing in AR with uh, Project Tango since 2014. So we recognize augmented reality as an important next uh, platform for immersion. Uh, and then over time, we, re we recognize we didn't need the hardware part of Project Tango. We're doing everything in software and on phones. And, you know, and frankly, AR Core brings many of the same capabilities to Android that AR Kit brings to uh, the iPhone.